Why don't you stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise for waking you up this morning. The Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is to be praised. And when the sun came up this morning, the Lord was by default worthy of praise. We are going into our worship set this morning, and uh, we invite everyone who would like to come up to the front for a time of worship to come on up. If you need prayer and you would like the ministry team to lay hands on you and pray with you about a situation or a physical need, come to the center front, and we would be more than happy to do that for you. We're going to sing about the victor's crown, and I feel like sharing a scripture. The Lord put this scripture on my heart this morning from the prophet Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. It says this, He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. That's what we're doing here this morning. The Lord has already spoken it. We're wearing the victor's crown. Let's give the Lord some praise and worship this morning. God bless you. Oh 
And that the cross, the work was finished. You were buried in the ground. But the grave could not contain you, for you were the victor.
Cause death could not hold you down You are the risen King Seated in majesty You are the risen To fall upon their knees You're the one who welcomes sinners And you open blinded eyes You have healed the broken hearted And you brought the dead to life Forgetting all our sins You remember With authority you spoke and, and you set the captive free. You're the king who came to serve and you're the God who washed our feet. You're the one who took our burdens when you bled upon the cross. Through your kindness and your mercy, you became the way for us. Forgetting all our sin. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You remember all your promises. You are amazing. More than amazing. Forever I got your boy.
it to him. More than amazing. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Forever our God. You're more than enough. Oh. probably be amazing to describe the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just grace, it's amazing grace. It's not just his provision, it's amazing provision. It's not just what he does and how we feel in his presence. It is truly amazing and awe-inspiring and all of those good things. Thank you, worship team, for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Thank you for your response today in the house of the Lord. You may make your way back to your seats. Please see your new March bulletin for all upcoming event details. This is the first Sunday in March, so we have new bulletins for you with new announcements and new things to put on your calendar, so please make a note of that. One important change that we need to let you know about is that tomorrow night we will have no Monday Night Life services here tomorrow night due to the holiday break. Um, However, we will have Wednesday Night War on the Floor prayer meeting, a very special Wednesday night this week. The Lord has spoken to our pastor, and he feels led to do communion this Wednesday night during prayer. This is going to be a very, very special prayer meeting, so please make a note on your calendar that we'll not gather together tomorrow here on Monday night, but we will have a very special prayer meeting Wednesday night. You do not want to miss that. Also, in the bulletin, you will notice that we have some creative arts ministry training upcoming. Um, This will be a week of training and then a showcase at the end of March. Brother Terry Vick, who has been with us a few times already and has blessed us greatly, he will be with us, and he specializes in the creative arts ministry, such as dramatic signing, acting, puppets, drama, and much, much more. If you are interested in learning more about ministering through the creative arts or participating in this event, please sign up at the foyer desk today. It's very important that we get as accurate as possible of account as to who will be participating in that week in that showcase it's going to going to be just an incredible event and uh, it's something we have looked forward to for a, a while now so please make note of that also I know most of us are woken up every morning by this little device called an iPhone or a, a smart device it kind of replaced alarm clocks at least in our household and they do update automatically when the time changes but next week is daylight savings time and we do want to just 
create some awareness now. Go ahead and make a reminder. Write a note on the refrigerator. Do something to remember to set your clocks ahead next week. We lose an hour. So if you don't do it, you'll get to church an hour late, and then you will have missed a whole hour of what has happened here. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to miss anything that goes on around here at the Pentecostals of Lee Road. So please make note of that. At this time, we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithing and offering. And from Bishop Marcelli on down through the pastoral staff and every leader and everyone that works in every ministry at this church, thank you. Thank you for your Project 17700 commitments and your faithful giving week in and week out. Just incredible things happen. We couldn't have a church like this without a group of people, a body of believers who buy into what God is doing and what the Lord has placed as a vision for our church, a local, national, and international vision here from the Pentecostals of Lee Road. And we are seeing the fruits of that. Uh, what an, Just an awesome, awesome uh, church we have. That's, it's, our church is amazing. It's the Lord's church. We understand that. And he, does, he doesn't do anything that's not amazing. And I'm just amazed and happy to be a part of this church and to join with you every week in giving in our tithing and offering and building fund and and all of those things that we have to give. Can we stand at this time? We're going to go to the Lord and ask Him to bless our offering and multiply it for His glory. Father, we thank You so much for what we feel here. Lord, I don't feel worthy to feel Your presence here the way I do, but yet... Your amazing grace has made it possible and you have opened up a pathway for each and every one of us to access the throne this morning. And I pray you bless this offering that we are bringing to you today. Multiply it for your glory and to advance your kingdom and to spread this gospel to further reaches and further corners of this earth and this community. We love you and we thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would march from the back to the front, God bless you. still waiting on. How many of you have a promise that God gave you and you've received that promise? We're going to sing a little bit about that this morning.
Somebody needs to be reminded of the promise he made you. Come on, give your praise to the Lord for a moment. 
Just tell Jesus, I love you with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. Oh, let's give him a hand of praise and a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Look at your neighbor and smile at them. Tell them they look real good today. I want to give you a report. Uh, last couple of weeks in service, we've been praying for personal friends of mine. He's my yard maintenance man, Carlo Bono, his wife. Lynn had a 10-hour a, a surgery uh, about 10, 11 days ago, been on life support. But uh, this Wednesday, they took her off, took all the tubes out. She's sitting up on the side of the bed, sitting. Man. <clears throat> he, come, he come by my house yesterday and to do the grass. I said, man, you, you need to be at the hospital with your wife. He said, Bishop, he said, I had to get out of there. I just had to get out in God's green earth and breathe some air besides hospital air. He said, I just want to come in here and tell you, tell all the people tomorrow that my wife's here because of prayer. My wife's here because of prayer. I want to thank you for praying. It might be me one day you're praying for. It might be you one day we're praying for. But we got a God that made us a promise. We have the promises of the Lord and they're yea and amen and they never outdated. Praise the Lord God. Thank you. I want to I want to thank some people today before we get into the word of the Lord. I want to thank our sound team that always does such a good job. Last Sunday we had some challenges with the weather and uh, the rain caused us some uh, uh, and the lightning knocked a lot of our equipment out and uh, we, we cannot be live on the web today because of situations beyond our control. We're going to have to repurchase some more equipment. And uh, the lightning just did a number on the stuff that uh, is electronically uh, plugged in and helps things operate. I want to thank our sound team. A lot of them have been down here this week working. Give them a good hand, would you please? Amen. I want to thank our musicians and our praise team for spending hours talking to the Lord about what song set we need to sing for every Sunday. I'd like for you to give them a good hand, please. And I'd, I'd like to especially thank uh, the, the FIT team, the, the uh, hostess and the ushers last Sunday and the pouring down rain, our beautiful men and women were out with umbrellas getting wet helping people in and out of their cars and going to park cars. I want to personally thank Brother Jason, Sister April Mall's leadership and their team. Would you give them a hand? They do such a wonderful job. And then I want to thank the caregivers of this church, those who take care of your children, uh, those that teach your Sunday school kids uh, from the hour of 9.30 to 10.30. Then I want to thank the nursery workers that take care of from zero to three years. Would you give all those people a hand? Would you just give them a real good hand? They do such a wonderful job. And then last, I saved them for last. I, I want to thank the people that clean this church two and three times a week. I, I go into several different bathrooms. I usually try to find the closest one, you know, and uh, I've not went into any of our restrooms or, and I've not come into this church at any time that it wasn't clean and smelling good. So all of you that helped clean this church, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We ought to give them a real good hand. They make, that's right. That's right. And then, Pastor Marty's already alluded to it. All of you that are participating in Project 17700, it's our building fund, it's our giving focus. And Pastor Paul Trinacost, uh, our CFO, uh, came a month ago and he enlightened us with some tragic uh, numbers that kind of has bothered me ever since. 
but I would like to report to you since Pastor Paul has been here and taught uh, on the stewardship and giving and then in my absence of uh, being with uh, Scotty and my son and their dilemma with their son, uh, he preached in my absence on the uh, giving and since he has been here, we have seen an upswing in our tithing and offering and our building fund and our missions given. So why don't you just clap your hands and give the Lord some praise. <laughs> Sitting where you sit, would you join hands with somebody? We're going to pray. Lord, we're coming to the word of the Lord now. You spoke to my heart about this message. I feel very strongly about it. I'm going to preach today. And Lord, I'm so excited to be here with your people. These are the most wonderful people in the world. And Lord, I'm counting such an honor to stand before this community and represent you to the people of this community. And I bring the burden of my heart because I love these people so much that I want them to find everything they can through you and live a good overcoming life. I pray that you'd anoint the word of God today. I pray you'd anoint my lips. I pray you'll anoint my mind. Don't let me say anything I don't need to say. Let me only say those words that come from you. Lord, deposit your word in the hearts of people today. Stir them deeply. Let them leave here with hope that they can make it. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Amen. I'm going to talk to you today about a subject I talk about a lot. Thank you, Sister Michelle, for playing the background music. I enjoy it. Music is such a music is such a refresher for me. I I, I love music. I probably love it a little bit too much, but I, I do love music, especially good music. My heart's kind of heavy today. We're going to do something we've never done on a Wednesday night prayer meeting. I just last, this past week, hasn't been a real good week for me physically. I've, I've struggled in my body to even go. And I said, you know, next Monday's going to be Lundy Girl. And Tuesday's going to be Mardi Gras. And Wednesday's going to be Ash Wednesday. So we're going to, I said, why don't we just have communion Wednesday night at prayer meeting? Donna said, well, we've never done it. Don't mean we can't start now. So I'm inviting you out Wednesday night. After prayer, we're going to have communion. And then all the heaven's going to come down. You watch it. So whatever you got to do to get here Wednesday night, you need to get here. 6.30. Everybody say 6.30. I'm going to talk to you today about a subject I feel very, very, very strong about. And I gave this title. I did struggle with the title on the last word. So I finally, I was going to talk, call it the treasure that's in the snow. But I chose to call it treasure in the storm. Treasure in the storm. Gabby Douglas. Gabby Douglas. The fourth child born to her poor black family. At her birth, she struggled with digestive diseases when she was born. At two months, her family was homeless. They lived in their van for three months. As a small child, her family noticed something special about Gabby. She had a unique talent for, gymna for gymnastics. Her mom raised her four children on her own, and they barely scraped by. In spite of their poverty, she and her other children found a way to fund Gabby's training. In spite of injuries, Prejudice and heartbreak, she worked through all of those things. 
In 2012, Gabby Douglas struck gold twice at the Summer Olympics. This 16-year-old won gold medals in both the individual and the all-around and team competitions at 16. She is the first woman of color in Olympic history to become the individual all-around champion and the first American gymnast to win gold in both the individual all around in team competitions. She is the only American all around champion to win multiple gold medals in her event thus far. Treasures in your storm. She didn't start out with a silver spoon in her mouth. Matter of fact, her mom didn't even have a home to take her to when she was born. Their home was their van, and they would go from Walmart parking lot to Waffle House parking lot to wherever they could park and be safe for a night. But throughout her young life, her mom and her other family members found a way to fund this child's special talent to see that she would have the opportunity to hone her skills and to do something that no other lady has ever done in her life. She was the first woman of color in Olympian history to become a two time, two multiple gold medalist winner. Life is a struggle at best sometimes. I ask you the question this morning, where are you living in life? The hand that you've been dealt, what are we going to make out of the hand that's been dealt to us? It's our choice. The choice is what we decide to do. We can cry in our iced tea. We can grumble and gripe and have a pity party. But we can also understand that we have a choice that we can get our melody going before the Lord and we can find a way to praise our way out of the hell we're living in. I'm afraid we waste way too much energy in cursing the darkness that we live in. I believe we ought to take that energy and not curse the darkness, but we need to turn on the light in our life so this world can see the good Father's love in us. I want to challenge every one of you today. You might be in a storm, but there's treasure in your storm. God Almighty's got some gifts inside of you that haven't been discovered yet. So why don't you be the first one to win two gold medals? Don't curse the darkness. Just this week, just this week in the state of Mississippi, there was a situation that a man deceased, he died, true story, he died, the coroner came and pronounced him dead, he filled out all the paperwork, put him in his body bag, and here come the last people that's going to touch you, the undertaker's. They came and zipped him up, rolled him out, took him back to the funeral parlor, took him in the embalming room, and they left for four hours to go have dinner with their family. When they came back, there was activity inside that black body bag. And um, it was jumping, it was moving. The man was deceased. 
He was dead, or so they thought. And they unzipped the bag and they found that which was dead is now alive. You had a man that wasn't ready to give it all up yet. They still can't explain it. They asked the coroner, did you not know he was alive? He said, we did what we were trained to do. All I can say is the guy had some fight left in him. I want to know, is there any fight left in somebody this morning? Come on now, I wonder, are you still in a fight? Are you still wanting to hang on to the Lord God Almighty? I don't care what kind of hell you're living in. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. I'm glad I wasn't that undertaker. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Mm. Oh, I asked my wife, I said, well, what would you have thought if you would have went there and saw that bag jumping? She thought, I said, she would have thought, man, there's a mouse or something in there. I said, well, that would have been a big mouse. I sure would have run. There's one thing I don't like. I don't like mice, mouse, rats, or anything like that. True story. When we was young, I got up on, Don and I were young, married. I made her go kill the thing. I got up on top of the table. <laughs> Treasure in the storm. You know, quit cursing your darkness. You're just going to be aggravated. I mean, you know, some people couldn't be positive if the sun shined every day. They'd find something wrong with it. You know, we live, you know, right now, this is one of the craziest winters I've ever lived in in the state of Louisiana. I mean, in Alexandria, Louisiana, three times this year, it has rain. It has rain, rain. It has snowed two plus inches of snow three different times. We're not going to curse that kind of weather. There are. If you look at the news, I decided the other day I was going to watch some news. So I turned the news on and I'm watching the news. I'm watching in some part of the country. It's snowing so hard. They already got 15 inches of snow on the ground. And they're supposed to get 11 more before daylight. I'm like, whew, I'm glad I don't live up there in York, Pennsylvania. And then, you know, in another city, it snowed so much this year till the, the city run out of money to buy salt, to go salt the highways. And the people couldn't go anymore and couldn't go anywhere. They had to wait to fix the budget in a couple of days where they could get more salt because they had already used more salt this winter than they had all the others combined. You know, and, and then, you know, you got in that same city that they run out of money for the salt, they had 500,000 people without power that night and the next night. Then I talked to a preacher that pastors right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago when all this hard winter was going on, and I said, how are you doing, Pastor Todd? He said, man, I just got home. He said, I was on the interstate four and a half miles from my house. He said, I had to spend the night in my car last night because the interstates were blocked down. It was so much snow and so much ice. He said, I just walked through the door of my house about an hour ago, and my daughter just got home. They had to spend the night in their school bus. You ever heard of such crazy weather in all your life? You know, we, we can either do one or two things. It's a choice. You can either curse what's going on, or you can look for the treasure in the storm. What does the scripture mean when it says, weeping may endure for a night? but joy is coming in the morning. I tell you what it means. You're going to cry until you get it all in order, and then when you change your attitude, that's when the Lord's going to change your circumstance 
And that's when you're going to find the treasure in the storm. I want to tell somebody this morning, the Lord gave me a word. God sent you here this morning so you would leave here with hope. It's going to be all right. You're not going to lose everything you've got. You're not going down the drain. Woo. Could you bump my monitors up a little bit, Brother Russell? You know, you, you can either curse the darkness or you turn on the light. And I've always seen it is the glass is half full. It's never half empty. It's always half full. I look around this crowd today, and, and, and Jesus don't have to have nobody special here to have a good day. He just needs somebody to lift their hands and begin to praise and magnify the Lord. You know what we all ought to do? We ought to start saying, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He raised me just in time. I once was on the outside, but now I'm on the inside. Look what the Lord has done. I found the treasure and the storm. Give him praise right now. What is treasure? In my own simple thinking, I would think that treasure is something that has a value to it. Now, if I'm going to have Donna and Rhonda to fix some good homemade biscuits and tomato gravy, we're not going to get that old silver pot. We're going to get them cast iron skillets. Because them old cast iron skillets, man, they get that crust just right on those biscuits. And then that other cast iron uh, Dutch oven, it's made so much gravy in its lifetime, I don't even know how old that thing is. But brother, we're not getting rid of those two cast iron pots around my house because they know, they treasure to me. They not the best looking pots you got in the world, but brother, they can produce some of the best stuff you've ever put your lips on. Amen. Come on, somebody. Well, you know what? You, you know what the treasure is? The Word of God says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You know what that means? I used to be a drunk till I found the treasure. Now I'm a man of God. I used to be a lost man, but now I'm found because I got the treasure of God. So look at your life before God. Look at your life after God. And if you still don't get excited when the songs of the Lord start going on, if something don't happen in your hands, if something don't happen in your feet, if something don't happen in your heart, you lost the treasure. It's time to get another dip from the glory spout where the glory comes out. It's time to have a rebaptism of the fire of God. It's time to have a rebaptism of the fire of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not. I want to be heard. There, there we go. There we go. I'm just saying, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, I don't know if I can make it. Well, if you don't know if you can't make it, you ain't going to make it. Oh, but it's not the size of the dog. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And as for me and my house... We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve him when we're rich. We're going to serve him when we're poor. We're going to serve him when we're mad. We're going to serve him when we're happy. We're going to serve him when we're sad. We're going to serve him when the Lord comes down. We're going to serve him. We're going to love him. We're going to live for him because look what the Lord has done. You know, God said to Job in Job chapter 38 verse 22, he said, there's treasure in the storm. He said, hast thou entered into the treasure of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasure 
of the hell. You know what the Lord was trying to tell old Job? I know you got that broken piece of pot. And I know you're scraping all them putrid sores on your body. And I know you're trying to have a conversation with me, but your attitude's not real good right now. So let me take you back to when you used to have everything going your way. And you would praise me every morning and you'd sacrifice for your kids every day and every night. So I got a question for you, Job. Have you entered into the treasure of the snow? Do you even know where the snow comes from, Job? Oh, have you seen the treasure of the hell? You know where all that comes from, Job? It comes from me. I put the boundaries on the water and the land. I made the Leviathan leap up and down in the sea. I told the sun when to come up and when to go down. I told the moon what to do. I told the stars what to do. I told the morning stars to sing for glory and to dance. And Job, if you'll go back and find the treasure in the snow, you'll quit griping and complaining and you'll say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. I'm telling somebody this morning, get out of your sackcloth and ashes and get your praise garment on and begin to praise ye the Lord. There is treasure in your storm. I said there is treasure in your storm. I want to tell you there's treasure in your hell. Nobody knows how big God is till you show them how you can live in your hell. There's treasure in your storm. One of the most read, one of the most read chapters in the whole Bible is Psalms 23. It's the most quoted book in the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Man, that 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 whole chapter is quoted. And you're just saying, Lord, I know you're going to give it to me right now. But you know what? Psalms 23 really says he's going to be with you in the dark. Now, I just got to tell you, I find a lot of funny places to have a prayer meeting at my house. This morning I was in the shower and I was talking to the Lord about my life. And I didn't, I, I wasn't grumbling and griping. I was just trying to repent and talk to the Lord for myself. And I started singing that old song. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. I told Sister Michelle and them next Sunday, I want y'all to sing that right before I preach. So they're going to learn it and, start, and sing it for it next Sunday. So in that shower, I started singing. I can't even walk, Lord, without you holding my hand. The, the valley is too deep and wide. And the mountain's too high. And when I got to those two lines and stanzas of that song, Brother Smith, I just lost it. I, somewhere in the bottom pit of my heart, I began to weep and cry. I said, Lord, what's going on? Why, am, why in the world am I losing control? Why am I crying like this? I was sobbing so much. I was just groaning. It hurt so bad. And the Lord said, I'm having you to be broken because I need to know that you got to depend on me for everything you get. You see, I can't walk through that valley without him. I can't climb that mountain without him. But as long as he's holding my hand, I can walk through hell. I can walk through fire. I can walk through the valley. I can climb the mountain. I can soar the heights like an eagle. I can make it in the midnight. I want to hear you shout today and say, yes, I'm going to make it because I got a good shepherd and that shepherd's the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't we just give him a praise break right now? I feel a breakout wanting to happen this morning. I said I feel a breakout wanting to happen this morning. I feel a breakout wanting to happen this morning. Woo! Come on, let's praise him for a moment. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it all over me. Something got a hold of me. Something stay a hold of me. Don't let me go, Jesus. Can we praise him right now?
ever really thought about Psalms 23? About what it actually says? It says, Jesus don't exempt us from the valley. Psalms 23, it says, he'll be with us in the dark. He'll be with me in the dark. He'll lead me in the dark. He'll feed me and he'll teach me. Some of my greatest lessons in life have come to light in the dark. I preached the whole message 11 and a half years ago in that other building over there. I called it, God is up to something great. And one of the dear ladies in this church was fixing to discover that she had throat cancer, and that would be Cindy Mars. And then I was fixing to discover that I was fixing to have my whole life changed by a bad surgery. I preach God is up to something great. And then the next sermon on the next Sunday, I preach, can you live for God when he is silent? I will never forget those two messages because I felt like I was preaching to two people, to Cindy and to myself. And I quote from one of the messages I preached. I said, God does his greatest work in the dark room because a film can't be developed in the light because the light with the wrong exposure would ruin the picture on the film. So God keeps you in the dark while he's perfecting the picture he wants to show the world. <laughs> so you thought just bad luck come to you. No, 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 it ain't bad luck come to you. God's trying to show somebody in your world how you can live for God in this world without alcohol and without drugs and without premarital sex. Come on now, I'm trying to tell you right now, God had not left you out to dry. God had not left you there to die. But God is your flower in the wilderness. God, your sunrise in the darkness. God is your moon when it's dark. Come on right now, let's give him a shout of hallelujah as loud as we can. What brought you to God, brothers and sisters? How did you get to God? You didn't come to God because you had it all together. I tell you, as a 12-year-old boy, I came to the Lord. I know I can tell you the night I prayed through at Louisiana Youth Camp. You know, young people, youth camps are just around the corner. And you all know why pastors 60 years old still going to youth camp? Because that place up there at, 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 at Tioga is special to me. Because I got the Holy Ghost up there. I got called to preach up there. And I just about got married up there. I'm telling you, I believe there are special places in this world that's got a special anointing on them. And I'm telling you, just like Tioga, Louisiana... I believe the P-O-L-R campus is a sanctuary. I believe this is the most special place in all this community. We can leave the lights on and have a good time. We know whose partner we're dancing with. We're dancing with the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you are here today because you came to the Lord out of adversity? you raise your hand if you came to the Lord out of adversity? Now, come on, raise your hand. Don't be embarrassed. We came to the Lord out of adversity. Whatever causes you to realize how much you need God, that's your treasure. You know, I look over here today, and I see Brother Danny and Sister Kathy Smith at their age in life when they should be retired when they should be living out the last, the, the last part of their life, enjoying fishing and gardening and all that stuff, they tell us is what we're going to do. But they're in, they're in their 60s and they should be doing something like being on the creek bank or doing whatever. But they're surrounded over here by young men who come from less fortunate backgrounds. And for the last five years, the Smiths have given their life to make sure that these young men can find the Lord Jesus Christ. I was able to be at LaRonger Church last Sunday night 
and I watch Brother Smith baptize one of those boys in water in Jesus' name. When they ought to be somewhere doing something else, they're trying to raise somebody else's kids that they don't even know. My God, that's what you call treasure in the storm. Uh, everything in the Smith's life ain't perfect. She needs a back surgery to help her body, but it's not all gone right. But yet there's no griping and complaining in their household. Uh, there is finding treasure in their storm. Uh, you ain't got to have it all right to praise God. You just got to know the God of the storm. And if you know the God of the storm, he'll make it right. All right, every time and at night. So sometimes if you just want to go over to Brother Smith and hug his neck, pull out a $100 bill and say, you and your wife go have a good meal on us. You ought to go bless them. I'm on the board of directors over there and there's not a lot of money. To spend around. You know what the Lord called us to do? He called us to show people there's treasure in their storm. That's been a good week for me in my body. I'm not feeling real good at all right now, but there's one thing about it there ain't no quit inside me. I told the Lord this morning when I was struggling getting around, I said, I'm going to tell you like Job told you, though the skin worms may destroy this body, yet in my flesh will I see God. That's why that man come back to life in that body bag because his life wasn't over yet. Come on, don't call the undertaker yet. Don't call for the flowers yet. Don't call for the preacher yet. You still got some living to be done. Michelle, you can come. The music. Just give me about three minutes. We have a choice. We can whine and complain and curse and throw up our hands and fight it. Or we can go treasure hunting. What does Romans 8 and 28 say? It says, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. On the cross, it was a bloody mess. It looked like a failed mission even to his disciples. Wait, do you care to look just a little bit closer? The darkest day in history became our greatest source of strength and salvation. Today you're here with burdens of hopeless situations. You're here today with worries and concerns. You have no answers. Your brain is a question mark. Today you're here for need of salvation. You need a supernatural empowerment. I had just come here to tell you there's no darkness that is too dark. There's no sin that is too black. There's no situation too impossible. There's no burden too heavy. Can I tell you, you may be struggling today to keep it together. But if you can just get to Jesus Christ, everything will be all right. Say everything. Isaiah 1 verse 18 says, come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, crimson, they shall be white as wool. There's treasure in your storm. You might be struggling to keep it together this morning. You stood before the mirror. You got it all right. 
But you see, there's something down inside here that none of us can see. Only Jesus Christ can. He's the only one that can do it. Would you stand with me all across the building? Let your situation, let your burden bring you to your knees. While you're there on your knees, why don't you dig around? Won't you seek him a little while? Because when you start digging around, you start seeking him, you're going to find the treasure. Young boys at La Ronja Lighthouse Ranch, you're in the greatest place in the world for where you're at in your life right now. It may be strange to you. You may not understand everything that's going on. But there's a man called Jesus that's got your life and your future in his hands. And out of this group, God's going to call some of you into ministry. God's going to anoint some of you to be a preacher of the gospel. The Lord's going to give some of you the ability to draw your family together. The Lord's going to take his blood. He's going to cover you. He's going to give you another chance with your family. And the things that are broken, God's going to fix them. There's some of you here today, you come here and it's all broken. But if you'll just look just a little bit closer, you'll see Jesus, he's reaching. He said, come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Can you listen just a moment? Can you just listen just a moment as she just brings the music down just a little bit? Can you listen just a moment and can you hear Jesus calling your name he knows your name this morning he knows where you're at <laughs> he knows how hurt you are but you refuse to call on him because you're embarrassed he's not going to embarrass you He's not going to reprimand you. He's just speaking your name softly and saying, Rick, if you will come to me, I will give you rest. He's saying, Donna, if you'll come to me, I'm bigger than those migraine headaches. I'm bigger than that hole in your heart. Just listen for me to call your name. So today, I just want to ask you, can you hear Jesus calling your name? Oh, yes. What should I do? You need to reply. Say, Lord, I hear you. Because when you do, you're going to find your treasure in the storm. Jesus, I preached your word today, and now I'm done. I'm now going to give these people a time to come to pray. There's some going to come here today and pray to be encouraged because they're discouraged. There's some here today that need salvation. They're going to call on the saving name of Jesus. There's some coming today. They need to be water baptized for remission of their sin. And so, Lord, I want you to reveal that to them. Lord, right now, I want you just to call everyone by name. I want you to call them by name. Lord, there's somebody come here this morning. They said, I'm going to go try it one more time. And, Lord, that person is here. I can hear them saying it on their way here this morning as they pounded on the, as they pounded on the steering wheel. Why am I even going? They came because you was going to call their name. I'm opening this altar for you now. I want to ask you to come and give your life and your heart and your soul and your spirit to the Lord. Leave where you're standing. It don't matter who comes to pray but you. It matters that you come today, sir matters that you come today ma'am in the name of Jesus take over take over in this altar today we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ come on would you leave where you're at come on would you leave where you're at right now who is like you Lord in all the earth matchless love and beauty in this world but nothing in this world can satisfy 
Nothing in this world would satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Nothing, nothing in this world would satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup. Come on now, give it to him. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry.
Give praise to the Lord God Almighty. Oh, Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise offering right now. Let's give the Lord some love. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Come on, give him a shout of victory. I'm leaving here with victory in my heart. I'm leaving here with a song in my soul. I'm leaving here with a bounce in my step. I'm leaving here in the joy of the Lord. Come on, clap your hands again. Let's give him some praise. I feel the Holy Ghost down in my soul just like the Bible says. So this morning, this morning were the pictures that you saw of Gabby. A less fortunate little African-American little girl that had some handicapped challenges when she was born her mother had her own set of challenges and they lived in their car and their van more than they lived in the house the first few years of their life but never did her mother even when Gabby with 360 days left of intense training she went to a 24 month place in the state of Iowa to be coached by one of the greatest gymnastic coaches in all of the world. He was a Chinese man. And one year into it, she felt to quit, and she called her mama to come get her. Her mama came up there, and she looked at her, and she hugged her. She said, Mama loves you, but Mama ain't taking you home. Why, Mama? I want to quit. I want to give up. She said, Gabby, you hadn't accomplished your dream yet. You hadn't been the best Gabby ever. And if you leave and go home now, you'll always wonder, could I have ever done it? She said, Mama's going home in the morning, and you're going to stay here. And the next 12 months was the most challenging 12 months of her life, as the story goes. But it paid dividends when she'd done something. Nobody has ever done at an Olympics. She celebrated two gold medals. The first African American or any person has ever done. The moral of that story is we can either look at the lemonade and say, well, that's good. Or we can throw the lemons away. I choose to make lemonade with my lemons. How about you? Somebody today is going home and going to set the climate in your house a little bit better than it's been. It's just like turning up the air conditioner when it's hot. Somebody's going to go in their house today and set it in order and say, Devil, you've been having your way too much around here. We're not going to give away to our flesh. We're going to give the Lord praise in the morning when we get up. We're going to praise him all day long, and we're going to go to bed tonight giving praise to the Lord. Would you clap your hands and shout hallelujah one more time? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. See you Wednesday night. Have a great week. Enjoy your lunch today. Look around. Shake somebody's hand. Be a friend.